take you, to be sure. But there is plenty of time for that. Four or five years hence, Mrs. Parker. Four or five years hence. But when the time does come, I shall have much pleasure in marrying her myself to some strapping young fellow in her own life. Um, uh, I, I, I've often wondered if you'll excuse the liberty, sir. You have never married. Be still, my fluttering heart. <laughs> <laughs> a clergyman's wife does so much good in a village. You are not as young as you once were, and, and soon you will be wanting someone to, to nurse you and <laughs> to look after your little comforts. There is much truth in what you say, Mrs. Bartlett. I am getting on in years, and help make good cheer my declining days. Time was when it might have been. But I've left it for too long. I'm a very old fogey now. Am I not, my dear? A very old fogey indeed. <laughs> no, Mrs. Parfit. My mind is quite made up. I shall live and die a solitary old bachelor. Oh, mother, you don't fret. Be comforted. Uh, I, I, I don't want any time. We will try again. We will try again. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little girl. I'm afraid she has something on her mind. <laughs> she is rather comely, though. Time was when this old heart would have throbbed in double time at the sight of such a fairy form. But tush, I am puling. Here comes the young Alexis and his proud and happy father. Let me dry this telltale tear. <laughs> Sir Marmaduke, my dear young friend Alexis, on this most happy, most auspicious plighting. Permit me, as a true old friend, to tender my best, my very best congratulations. Sir, you are most obliging. In Dr. Daly, my dear old tutor, and my valued pastor, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. May fortune bless you, and may the middle distance of your young life be as pleasant as the foreground, the joyous foreground. And when you have reached it, may that which is now the far-off horizon, but which then will become the middle distance, <laughs> in fruitful promise, be exceeded only by that which will have opened in the meantime into a new and glorious horizon. <laughs> Dear sir, that is an excellent example of an old school of stately compliments to which I have, through life, be much addicted. Will you oblige me with a copy of it in clerkly manuscript that I may use it on appropriate occasion? <laughs> Sir, you shall have a fairly written copy as Saul descends into his western slumbers. Come, come, my son. Son, your fiance will be here in five minutes. Oh, rapture. Rouse yourself to receive her. Yes, you are a fortunate young fellow, but I will not disguise from you that this <coughs> union with the house of Sangazior realizes my fondest wishes. Aline is rich, and she comes of a sufficiently old family, for she is the 7,037th in direct descent from Helen of Troy. <laughs> True. There was a blot on the escutcheon of that lady. That affair with Paris. <laughs> but where is the family other than my own in which there is no flaw? You are a very lucky fellow, sir. A very lucky fellow. Father, I am welling over with limpid joy. <laughs> no, a sickening taint of sorrow overlies the lucid lake of liquid love. <laughs> upon which, hand in hand, Aline and I are to float into eternity. Alexis, I desire that of your love for this young lady you do not speak so openly. You are always singing ballads in praise of her beauty, and you expect the very menial to wait behind your chair to chorus your ecstasies. <laughs> it is not delicate. Father, a man who loves as I love... Poo-poo, sir! Thirty years ago I madly loved your future mother-in-law, the lady sang as yours. And I have reason to believe that she returned my love. 
But were we guilty of the indelicacy of rushing into each other's arms publicly, exclaiming, Oh, my adored one, the love it born, <laughs> ecstatic rapture, unmingled joy, which seems to be the modern fashion of love making? No, it was, Madam, I trust you are in the enjoyment of good health. <laughs> so, you are vastly polite, I protest. I am mighty well. <laughs> and so forth. Much more delicate, much more respectful. Let's see. Aline approaches. Let us retire that she may compose herself for the interesting ceremony in which we are to play so important a part. <laughs> No 
Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, that the world could break down the artificial barriers of rank, wealth, education, age, <laughs> beauty, habits, <laughs> taste, temper, <laughs> and recognize the glorious principle that in marriage alone is to be found the panacea for every ill. Continue to preach that sweet doctrine, and you will succeed, O oh, evangel of true happiness. I hope so. As yet, the cause progresses but slowly. <laughs> Still, I have made some converts to the principle that men and women should be coupled in matrimony without distinction of rank. I've lectured on the subject at mechanics institutes, and the mechanics were unanimous. <laughs> <laughs> I have preached in workhouses, beer shops, and uh, lunatic asylums. <laughs> and I have been received with enthusiasm. I have addressed navvies on the advantages that would accrue to them if they were to marry wealthy ladies of rank, <laughs> and not a navvy descended. Noble fellows, and yet there are those that hold that the uneducated classes are not open to argument. What do the countesses say? Why, at present, it can't be denied. The aristocracy hold aloof. <laughs> <laughs> the working man is the true intelligence after all. 
He is a noble creature when he is quite sober. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Aline, true happiness comes of true love, and true love should be independent of external influences. It should live upon itself and by itself. In itself, love should live for love alone. <laughs> desperate step in support of them. Have you ever heard of the firm of J.W. Wells & Co., the old established family sorcerers in the Simmery Axe? I have seen their advertisement. They have invented a filter which, if report may be believed, is simply infallible. I intend to distribute it through the village, and within twelve hours of my doing so, there will not be an adult in the place who has not learnt the secret of pure and lasting happiness. What do you say to that? Well, yeah. A filter is a very useful thing in a house, but I still don't see that it is the sort of thing that would place its possessor on the very pinnacle of earthly joy. <laughs> Aline, you misunderstand me. I didn't say a filter. I said a filter. <laughs> <laughs> don't you mean a love potion? On the contrary, I do mean a love potion. Oh, Alexis, I don't think it would be right. I don't indeed. And then, a real magician. Oh, it would be downright wicked. Aline. Is it, or is it not, a laudable object to steep the whole village up to its lips in love and to couple them in matrimony without distinction of age, rank, or fortune? Unquestionably, but... Then, unpleasant as it must be to have recourse to supernatural aid, I must <laughs> nevertheless pocket my aversion in deference to the great and good end I have in view. Hercules? Yes, my lord? It's Mr. Wells there. Ah, uh, yes, he's in the tent refreshing. Ask him to be so good as to step this way. Right away. Oh, and let us a real sorcerer! Oh, I should be frightened to death! I trust my lean will not yield to fear while the strong right arm of her Alexis is here to protect her. It's nonsense, dear, to talk of protecting me with your strong right arm in the face of the fact that this family sorcerer could change me into a guinea pig before you could turn around! <laughs> 
He could change you into a guinea pig, no doubt. But it is most unlikely that he would take such a liberty. <laughs> it's a most respectable firm, and I am sure he would never be guilty of so untradesmanlike an act. Good day, sir. Good day. I believe you are a sorcerer? Yes, sir. We practice necromancy in all its branches. We have a choice of set uh, assortment of uh, wishing caps, divining rods, amulets, charms, and counter charms. We can cost you a nativity at a low figure. <laughs> and we have our horoscope at three and six that we can guarantee out of our Arbuda chests. Each container a patent ad who comes out and prophesizes disaster, whispering complete, or strongly recommended. Our Aladdin's lamp are very chaste, and, uh, oh, and our prophetic cap for telling everything up from a change in ministry down to a rising unified are mm -hmm. strongly recommended, uh, much inquired for. Our penny cuts, the cheapest thing in the trade, is considered infallible. We have a choice selection of blessings also, but they're very little asked for. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't served one since Christmas, and that to a gentleman who bought it for his mother-in-law. Uh, but it turns out he was afflicted in the head. <laughs> and so it has been returned on our hands. But our sale of penny curses, especially on Saturday nights, is tremendous. We can't turn them out fast enough. <laughs> Wellington Wells. I'm a dealer in magic and spells, in blessings and curses, in amethyst purses and processes, witches and nails. If you want a proud throat to make tracks, if you'd melt a rich uncle in wax, you've but to look in on the resident gen number 77 relax. A first rate assortment of magic and for raising a postal shade with effects that are common for traffic. And no cheaper house in the trade. Love filter with quantities of it, and for knowledge if anyone burns, we're keeping a very small profit or profit who brings us unbounded return. For he can prophesy with the wink of his eye, people's security into futility, sum up a history, clear up a mystery, humor proclivity, for a nativity, for a nativity. He has answers oracular, bogey spectacular, tetrapod tragical, meat is so magical, facts astronomical, solemn or comical. And if you want it, he makes a reduction in taking a quantity. Anyone anything lacks, you'll find it already in stacks. If you'll only look in on the resident gin number 77 reacts. He can raise you hosts of ghosts, and that without reflectors, and creepy things with wings, and cold and grisly spectres. He can fill your crowds of shrouds and horrify you vastly. He can wreck your brains with chains and gibbering to grip and ghastly. <laughs> then if you plan it, he changes organity with an urbanity full of satanity, vexing humanity with an inanity, fatal to vanity, driving your foe to the verge of insanity. Body tautology, immunology, electrobiology, mystic nosology, spirit philology, high class astrology, such an analogy isn't a matter requiring an apology. Oh! My name is John Wellington Wells. I'm a dealer in magic and spells, in blessings and curses and ever curses and prophecy, puts it in doubt. And if anyone anything lacks, you'll find it already in stacks. If you'll only look in on the resident in number 77 reacts. to consult you on a very important matter. I believe you advertise a patent oxyhydrogen love at first sight filter? <laughs> Sir, it is our leading article. Now, I want to know if you can confidently guarantee it as possessing all of the qualities you claim for it in your advertisement. Sir, we are not in the habit of puffing our goods. <laughs> Ours is an established house with a large family connection and Every assurance held forth in the advertisement is fully realized. I let system to bait him. He'll change us into something dreadful. I know he will. 
I desire from purely philanthropical motives to distribute this filter secretly among the inhabitants of this village. I shall, of course, require a quantity. How do you sell it? Uh, in uh, buying a quantity, sir, we should recommend your taking it in the wood and drawing it off as you should happen to want it. Uh, uh, we have it in four and a half and nine gallon casks, also in pipes and hogshead for laying down. And uh, <clears throat> we uh, deduct 10% for prompt cash. I should mention I am a member of the Army and Navy stores. Uh, in that case, we deduct 25%. <laughs> Aline, the villagers will gather to carouse in a few minutes. Go and fetch the teapot. But Alexis! My dear, you must obey me if you please. Go and fetch the teapot. <laughs> I'm sure Dr. Daly would disapprove of it. <laughs> and uh, how soon does it take effect? In 12 hours. Whoever tastes it loses consciousness for that period. And upon awakening, falls in love, as a matter of course, with the first lady he meets who has also tasted it. <clears throat> and his affection is at once returned. One trial will prove the fact. Oh, good. Uh, now, Mr. Wells, I shall feel obliged if you will at once pour as much filter into this teapot as will suffice to affect the whole village. Uh, bless me, Alexis, many of the villagers are married people. Madam! This filter is compounded on the strictest of principles. <laughs> on many people, it has no effect whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but are you quite sure you have nerve enough to carry you through the fearful ordeal? In the good cause, I fear nothing. <laughs> Very good, then. Let us proceed at once to the incantation. <laughs>
but enjoy yourselves, I pray. Eat, I, and drink, be merry, I implore ye. For once, let thoughtless folly Excites a strange confusion within their aching eyes. A 
Thank <laughs> you. 